If you were to Google benefits of virtual reality, nowhere does it mention playing GameCube games. And so to correct this tremendous oversight on the part of Google, we're going to see if this three-year-old Oculus Rift can play nearly 20-year-old GameCube games. To accomplish this, we're going to be using Dolphin VR, not to be confused with regular Dolphin. There is a difference. The main difference is that Dolphin VR doesn't appear to have any significant updates, if any, since July, almost three years ago. That makes a big difference. In just the last few months alone, games like Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 went from unplayable slideshows to 60 frames per second with max graphics. So all of those key performance and feature updates since 2017 to now nearing the end of 2019 don't exist in Dolphin VR. The reason I put this at the beginning of the video is that back in the days of Dolphin VR, that means that the sound is going to be absolutely cringeworthy, much like my videos. First game is Animal Crossing. This is what you would normally see for the menu, and here is some gameplay. Pay attention to how wide your field of view is. Take a look at how far beyond the character you can see. For the VR versus non-VR comparison to really hit home, you're going to need to move your face close to the screen so that the image basically fills your field of view. And now, here's what it looks like in VR. As a whole, Animal Crossing is surprisingly not bad. The Animal Crossing world is a 5x6 grid, and since your field of view is wider, you now get to peek at neighboring terrain chunks, even if the houses, animals, trees, and terrain features haven't exactly loaded yet. Also, what you're seeing on screen is not the original game quality. At native settings, the text in Animal Crossing, and most other games, is completely unreadable. All the game footage you're seeing in this video, both VR and non-VR, is 16x texture filtering and we've increased the native rendering resolution all the way up from 640 by 528 to 2560 by 2112. Seeing the extra terrain is nice, but there's also some weird parts like you have to look down to get this view, and once you're indoors, all of the building interiors you have to look up to see. Also, the inventory user interface is crazy wacky, with all of the various UI elements being different distances apart. These UI issues aren't game-breaking, but between the creepy black sky, demented audio, and the loneliness of the empty terrain chunks makes the game not nearly as happy and cheerful as it originally was. It's more like a homebrew game than a first-party Nintendo title. I'd honestly just play this on my phone and deal with the audio stutter than rather play it in VR. It's that bad. Burnout 2 Point of Impact is another great demonstration of the Dolphin emulator exposing how weird UI setups can be when looked at from an unintended angle. Also, the shadow of the car is kind of annoying. If you get motion sick, now is a good time to back up from the display. During a round of crash mode, everything is fine until slow-mo gets activated or you use the boost. Both of these will trigger this blurred trail of images that may not seem like a big deal, but when that is your entire field of view in VR, game over. This game and several others are the reason why this video has taken over a week to make, because there's only so much nausea and headache that I can take before I have to stop. Plus, in games like Burnout, there's no advantage to being able to look around to the sides. If you wanted to look around behind you, it would take so long to turn the chair and move your head that you would have crashed into something. Even though Crash Tag Team Racing does not feature NVIDIA RTX technology, it just works. And everything is golden up until the moment the race actually starts. Then you've got a big old black box of user interface in your face, making it unplayable. Super Smash Bros. Melee works especially well in adventure mode. You can peek ahead at the Mario course with a quick glance, you can peek around and find the Triforce with another quick look, and not even have to battle Link at all. On the F-Zero course, you can see the cars going around the entire course, letting you know exactly how much time you have to find cover. But as for battling, no real advantage. You can see more of Hyrule Castle, if looking at empty level devoid of enemies is somehow useful. 
Also, in adventure mode, each end screen strobes horribly. If you have epilepsy, look away for the next five seconds. Lego Star Wars. Holy cow, Batman. Nothing outside of VR is going to convey just how amazing this game is. Because in this game, everything is scaled down to be Lego size. You navigate around the world by moving your head to adjust the camera, putting your face inside the building so you can actually see your characters walking to or away from you. It's really cool to experience it at Lego scale. And it's truly mesmerizing for about 20 or 30 seconds because it's an old version of Dolphin and the game crashes. I haven't tried every level, but every level I tried crashes in under a minute. Mario Party 7 has one of the derpier user interfaces with weird layering. I would have stopped testing the game here, but when picking modes, Toadsworth does have in colored text the name of what you're selecting, so it's still usable. Using the map view shows just how much culling has to go into the GameCube to conserve rendering resources. After all, it was released in the same year as the 150 nanometer GeForce 3 and ATI All-in Wonder 7500. I wonder who thought that was a good name. Mini game rules and controls can be read, and you can kind of make out the scores during gameplay, but you go from the cheerful board of the main game to the inevitable void of despair. One of the key points of VR is immersion, which playing in a big black void breaks. Mario Kart Double Dash is a great example of how the GameCube will sometimes load textures and resources ahead for the menus, and the cart selection screen is a fantastic example of the trippy layering issues in menus. Bowser Jr., Toad, and the car are behind the menu, but drawn on top, if that makes any sense. In the real world, it shouldn't, but for this awkward 3D rendering, it's just a mild continuity annoyance. However, that's not nearly as annoying as the copy of the sky blocking the road in front of you. This does go away when you drive through a tunnel, and you can get rid of most of it if you're willing to basically sit or lay down on the ground and not look at the top portion of the screen. So you're giving up the item indicators as well as what place you're in, but for me that's not much of an issue because I'm always in first place. Pikmin 1, like Mario Kart, shows the menu having textures, sprites, conk, and bethis, all loaded in case they're needed. I may be a bit biased because Pikmin 1 and 2 are some of my favorite all-time games, but I find the immersion pretty good. It's not like the Pikmin are three inches in front of your nose like in LEGO Star Wars, but the world has far more detail than you would originally notice. The dandelions alone. Need I say more? There's not too many spots in Pikmin 1 where you get to be up close on the level of the Pikmin, but I do like not having to rotate the view with the L button as much. Pro tip, if you do try Pikmin in VR, use the middle zoom level with the right trigger. It increases the draw distance compared to the first view and doesn't change the angle that much. Pikmin 2, like Pikmin 1, is a good experience, not enough to justify getting a VR headset by any means but still possibly worth it for a rabid Pikmin fan. Limited draw distance is still a thing, but thankfully, the fractions of the Pikmin lifting force versus treasure weight is rendered seemingly regardless of distance, so you can trace your Pikmin from across the map. Speaking of the map, it doesn't work. Good luck exploring complicated caves, because the map shows no walls, no paths, just the ship and the exit icons. Other broken Pikmin 2 UI elements include the treasure viewer and the Piclopedia showing nothing, just blank screens. Before you take a look at this next game, if you are sensitive to flashing, strobing, or you get seizures, look away from the screen until I tell you it is safe. Because Sonic Riders has the menus and buttons all on the same layer, something I'm used to seeing all the time when doing 3D design. Download a free computer case to 3D print, link below. But having this flashy screen fill my field of view? Bye, Felicia. Seizure warning over. As for gameplay, it really comes down to the level. Metal City and Splash Canyon are fine, but Egg Factory was a nauseating nightmare. Basically, you can play the game, but... Basically, you can play the game, but... 
don't expect to be actually going into the store to purchase extra vehicles to unlock because you're going to have a seizure before you can finish. Before we pass judgment on GameCube VR, let's compare this against games actually intended to be played in VR. First up is Rec Room, a free game. This was my first time playing it, choosing paintball. You can walk around with the control stick, but I, being a noob, only had teleport enabled when I was recording this. Ducking and leaning to aim makes this a great experience. Rise of the Tomb Raider is a game everyone should own for several reasons, but specifically the two VR experiences it contains are interesting. The level of detail compared to all the GameCube games is breathtaking. Being able to walk, bend, and crouch to look at extra detail is fun. As someone who's dabbled in 3D graphics from time to time, I like to admire others' work and you can really see details like the titles off a book in a way that you just can't stare at it in the main game. The last thing I tried for real VR was an animated short called The Crow. The fur and mouth detail on Skunk were amazing to see at eye level, and seeing the animation motion details that went into characters who were just listening on conversations was again, breathtaking. But getting back to GameCube VR, obviously nearly 20 year old games aren't going to have nearly the immersiveness of motion control or polygon counts or the lighting like actual VR titles do. But if we compare VR GameCube to normal GameCube, does the additional view and free camera add anything? I'm not really sure that it does. To the casual player, or those who play local co-op, for example, Shrek 2 was fun to play with my three siblings when we weren't fighting over who needed to move where to get the camera to move in the right way. But I tried it again in VR and the free look was nice to see so I could look ahead, but I wouldn't give up co-op to play it in VR. The same goes for Smash Melee. Cool feature with the VR free look, but it's not a replacement for being able to play on a couch with friends and a projector. Animal Crossing gaming sessions were many times shorter when I played in VR, and I found that I stopped playing not because I've sold Tom Nook all the shells on the beach, but because it just gets boring much faster, largely due to the sky being black and the whole environment not being as cute. But for Animal Crossing specifically, if I go back to playing it normally, the view is so zoomed in that now I don't want to play it that way either. It's an interesting dilemma. So if you're looking for a binary answer of do you play GameCube in VR or is it a waste of time, I'd say if it's only the games I've tried, if you got Pikmin, go for it. Anything else? Probably not. Other games like Super Monkey Ball 2 are basically completely unplayable. So if you do want to try this yourself, keep your expectations pretty low. You're not going to get a premium VR experience that competes with basically anything else that has come out. If you want to pick up a cool t-shirt like this one, or you want to download a 3D case that you can print on your own, then make sure to hit up 3dpc.xyz. Or if you don't wear t-shirts and don't need a computer case, check out some of these other videos which are not about t-shirts or computer cases. At least, I think so, I don't know what YouTube's gonna put there.